Stephanie O'Keefe, and I am chair of the Amherst Select Board, and it is a privilege to host this event today. On behalf of the town of Amherst, I would like to congratulate all of the towns who are here being recognized for this important designation today. Achieving the green community status is really a badge of honor. It validates our community values and all of the work that we've all done in service of those values. And more than that, it really represents a promise that we're making to ourselves and each other about the work that we still have to do in the future. Both the secretary and the commissioner are uh, former municipal officials, and in fact, Commissioner Sylvia is town moderator in Fairhaven, bless his heart. <laughs> uh, so as uh, it, having that background, they really understand what this means to all of us, what it took to get to this place, and perhaps even more importantly, or just as importantly, just how valuable the grant opportunities that this designation represents, uh, what that means to us and our communities. So we really appreciate the leadership of the state on environmental issues and encouraging municipalities through this program. Without further ado then, I would like to introduce the Commissioner of the Department of Energy Resources, Mark Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keith, and it is a real pleasure to be here in Amherst to celebrate with the seven communities that we are here to um, share in your uh, experience <clears throat> in becoming a green community. Thank you so much for hosting. Um, we are so pleased to be here. Um, again, for us, this is the most impo important part for us to be here with all of you to recognize you for your amazing accomplishments uh, in becoming designated green communities. Uh, Amherst, Conway, Gill, Huntington, Northfield, Pelham, and Sutherland are all leaders in the energy revolution that you hear Secretary Sullivan talk about. And you were before being designated as green communities. Uh, you had the core grassroots structure in place. You worked very diligently with your local elected officials, citizens, and energy committees to meet the five criteria to become a green community. And that is a very, very important step to take to create a cleaner energy future for your residents and your businesses in the next generations to come. It's also heartening because the seven communities that we represent, uh, that we recognize today, along with the other 10 that made up the, this class of 17, actually brought us over the 100 mark. And let me tell you, when we first started, our goal was 10 green communities in the first year. And it boggles the mind that so many communities have stepped up to the challenge that have worked hard day in and day out to become designated green communities. You should all be so very proud of this accomplishment. And so thank you. Big round of applause to all. <laughs> and so now uh, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce uh, the Secretary of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rick Sullivan. As you heard uh, the Chair of the Board of Selectmen, Selectman O'Keefe say, he is a former municipal official, former mayor of Westfield. And I can tell you, day in and day out, as I mentioned when we were in Boston, uh, Secretary Sullivan has asked all of us to really focus our efforts every day on helping cities and towns across the Commonwealth. We have no better advocate in the Patrick administration than Secretary Sullivan. He is um, responsible not only for the environmental side of the house, the environmental agenda of the Patrick Murray administration, but also the energy agenda. And he's very focused on creating clean energy technology opportunities here in the Commonwealth. He's very focused on helping us to reduce our energy costs wherever we can, whether it's town by town or city by city or the Commonwealth as a whole. And he's also very much focused on reducing our greenhouse gas emissions so that we ensure that the air that we breathe today and for generations to come is as clean as it can possibly be. So uh, please join me in welcoming Secretary Rick Sullivan. Thanks, Mark. Um, although I don't think we should be quite as amazed at um, 103, um, as, as Mark said, um, because with Mark at the helm of DOER, 
um, and the great team, which I know he's going to uh, introduce in a couple of minutes, so I won't step on his thank yous. Um, he has done um, exactly as advertised, and that is to take the conversation about our energy use and how we can be smarter about that um, and taking that to the communities. Um, because I have said um, that with all due respect, and I would say the same thing to the governor who's sitting here, um, <laughs> with all due respect um, to all of my state colleagues, the most um, important decisions and the best decisions are the ones that are made um, at the local level. And because what that really means is, and what picks up, and I think of what is the genius of the Green Communities Act, is it causes the discussion of our energy use to be taken to the local level. To have the education happen at the local level, to have the debate happen at the local level, and in fact to have the votes taken at the local level. And when you have the conversation of the fact that in Massachusetts we use 22, we spend 22 billion dollars a year in energy, and 80 percent of those dollars not only leave the region, they leave Massachusetts, um, but in most cases they leave the country. So you have $80,000, 80, 80 uh, billion dollars worth of economic opportunity that leaves the country. And that if we stop and think about that for a moment, we will make very different decisions. If we think about how those decisions impact our environment, we will make different dis decisions about our energy use. We in Massachusetts are at the end of the energy <coughs> pipeline. The most important fuel that we have in Massachusetts is the one that we do not use. And that is the vision of Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Murray, to take that conversation city by city, town by town, business by business, and in fact, home by home. And when you have that discussion, you do decide to become a green community. That is why we now have 103 communities in Massachusetts that have made the hard decision. They've deployed the higher uh, building code, 20% more efficient than the standard building code. They have encouraged renewable uh, generation in their communities. Um, they've committed to reduce their energy use by 20% by the year 2020. That will, in fact, reduce our greenhouse gas emission uh, footprint reduction and meet our targets in the Global Warming Solution Act, which is 25% by the year 2020, the most aggressive in the country. Um, those of you who have heard Governor Patrick or had the good fortune of working with Governor Patrick know that he sets aggressive targets, and these are all aggressive targets. But we are on target to hit those. And it's because of the great work that you do here in the local communities. The seven that we celebrate today gives me great pride of coming from Western Massachusetts. And you look at that map, Western Massachusetts is greener than most. Not totally green, so we've got some work to do. And I will, I will ask you for your continued leadership to have that conversation with your neighbors, um, not just here uh, in Amherst or the other communities that we're celebrating today as we grow our green um, communities. But it, not only is this a good energy policy, and you're gonna have a lot of debate over the next couple of months about our energy policy. Massachusetts is leading the way in that energy discussion. It is good energy policy. It is certainly good environmental policy, but it is also very good economic development. Um, it's a, a, a good economic development policy. We bring some of that $18 billion back here to the local economy. We've seen the fact that we now have 64,000 people in Massachusetts that work in the field of clean energy. A 6.7% job growth just last year. And we will be issuing new job numbers uh, you know, in the next few weeks or the next couple of months that will show that it has grown even more. So it is just smart policy no matter how you look at it. But the best part is, it is driven from the local communities. So I want to thank um, certainly our representatives um, that will have a chance here to speak in, in a moment that have been great proponents of this uh, policy uh, at the state level. But I want to thank the local leaders um, that take those tough votes at town meetings and select board meetings. But I also want to thank the volunteers from the energy committees or the sustainable committees that have really driven this policy at the local level because that is really where it starts at the grassroots, which will make this the strongest possible policy for generations to come. So on behalf of Governor Patrick, Lieutenant Governor Murray, and the entire EEA family, I want to congratulate you on, on a great achievement today. Mark will be handing out some swag and a check. Uh, but I also want to ask you for your continued leadership and to have those conversations in your homes and your businesses and have them with your neighbors so that we can make all of Massachusetts a green community.
Thank you for your leadership. Thank you very much, Secretary Sullivan. And as the Secretary mentioned, um, we certainly uh, would not be here without the Green Communities Act, which was legislation, landmark legislation, which catapulted Massachusetts to the head of the line nationally in energy policy. The Green Communities Act created this very program and the division that supports it. And the Green Communities Act, along with the Global Warming Solutions Act and the Green Jobs Act, was a real reflection of the partnership between the Patrick Murray administration and the legislature. And so we can all be really uh, appreciative of the fact that in Massachusetts, our legislative branch and executive branch work diligently as they do on so much to bring this program to all of us. And with that, I'd like to recognize and ask Representative Kulik to come up and say a few words. And uh, ironically, Representative Kulik is, was one of the members on the conference committee for the Energy Bill, which again continued to push us forward in, in really strong energy policy in Massachusetts. And we thank him for that, Representative Kulik. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you, Secretary and Commissioner, for coming out here today to present these awards and recognize each of these communities for the very hard work that they've done. You know, I did serve in the legislature when we did the original Green Communities Act a few years back, and uh, it's already been mentioned how amazing it is that we stand here today and, and recognize that 103 communities are now participants that have been certified as green communities, and that uh, there was some skepticism in the administration about that. And I have to tell you, there was even more skepticism in the legislature when we passed uh, this legislation. Because I think those of us who represent smaller communities, and I represent 19 small towns, we thought this was gonna go to the cities, this was gonna go to the suburbs, but nonetheless, it was an important policy initiative, something that was important to do for the state. And so, to see the small, number of small communities that are on that map, is particularly gratifying, and it speaks to, I think, the kind of, of self-reliance and initiative and the volunteer spirit that you often find in the very smallest communities in the state. Because this does take a lot of work, as you know, and right, those of you who have worked on this, it's, it's an enormous undertaking, uh, and for good reason, because it really needs to be well-documented, well-planned, and uh, have good results. So it takes a lot of work, and uh, in some of those communities, have uh, some full-time or part-time town administrators, but many of them don't. They rely on volunteer energy committees or sustainable ability committees. And uh, the kind of work, the, the long hours, uh, the attention to detail, and selling this at the local level, um, which takes, puts your credibility on the line, um, but shows, I think, your neighbors and voters who come forward to support this, that the town is really invested community has taken a big step and it's going to pay off big dividends, not just with a check, but that helps, um, but with long-term sustainable and meaningful reductions in energy consumption and putting your communities on a much more self-reliant path. You know, we hear in the legislature all the time that, that cities and towns, there's never enough local aid, there's never enough state money to go around, and it's often true, and these last few years have been very difficult. But one of the things we have tried to do in the legislature and working with the Patrick administration has been to give you some tools um, in addition to some money that may be useful. And we've done that in the area of municipal health insurance reform last year. We've done an update here this year of, our, of uh, this program this, and energy legislation that passed in the last days of our session in July. Um, and our ongoing commitment to the Green Communities Program, I think, is, is rewarded uh, in terms of are seeing a positive benefit out there by the kind of effort you've all undertaken at the local level. So uh, I have four communities here today, uh, Conway, Huntington, Pelham, and Sunderland. So I want to particularly congratulate them and thank them for their initiative. Um, I, I look forward to the uh, benefits of the investments you're going to be making. Uh, and uh, we hope that it's just the beginning for more to come, both in your communities and setting the groundwork for a lot more efforts like this, but also, as the Secretary said, hopefully spreading the word to other communities. And uh, one of the things I'm impressed about with this map is not only how green it is in Western Mass and how many of those communities are small, but it now connects the entire borders from Vermont down to Connecticut. You can make a, a straight line down there and touch a green community. 
And I, I can't uh, give up the mic without also saying thanks to Jim Barry, uh, who uh, you all have, uh, yeah, give him a hand. support, his uh, hand-holding, his advice has been uh, instrumental <coughs> and a uh, very important part of that. So Jim, you should feel very, very proud of the work that you're doing helping these towns. So again, I'm happy to be here today to congratulate you and thank you for what you're doing and keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Representative. Uh, and, and one correction, I, I did mention you were on the conference committee. I think I bestowed that on you. Uh, although you were not, you were a tireless advocate uh, on, the, on the energy bill and on green communities, and for that we are, are very Absolutely. grateful. Um, and I also want to mention uh, there are other members of the great general court that had hoped to be here today but could not but send their regards and congratulations. Senator Benjamin Dowding, Senator Stanley Rosenberg, Representative Denise Andrews, Representative Ellen Story and Representative Paul Mark. They all send their congratulations and uh, regrets for not being able to be here. Uh, so a few things that I want to say about uh, being designated as a green community. Uh, through all of your efforts, uh, not only have you helped to um, really create a cleaner energy future for your residents, but you've done so for the Commonwealth as a whole. As the Secretary mentioned, we have ambitious energy goals here in Massachusetts that have really uh, put us at the forefront. We're ranked number one in energy efficiency, surpassing California. The governor recently received an award as a solar champion. And, and all of those things don't happen in a vacuum. Um, and the uh, Secretary also talked about our, our goals, our aggressive goals on, on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. None of that would happen without all of you. And so, you know, as we continue to um, get those accolades at the national level, you should all realize that you should take credit and responsibility for that as well, because everything that you do locally makes a real difference for the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And as green communities, with the five um, criteria that you have to meet, it sets you on a path to do some amazing things. Not only does it enable you to help uh, reduce your energy costs at a time when municipal budgets are, are very tight, um, but it also enables you to encourage, as the Secretary mentioned, more economic development in your communities through the buy right zoning and expedited permitting. And at the end of the day, through all of your efforts, it will help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which is uh, critically important to all of us these days. And to give everyone a sense of what this all translates to, the seven communities that we recognize today in committing to reduce uh, your energy consumption by 20% over the next five years, that represents taking off the grid, completely off the grid, over 150 homes. That is staggering. That is amazing. And because of these seven communities, we're going to accomplish that goal. So big round of applause because that's an amazing <laughs> In a minute, we will call each one of you up, each one of the communities up, so that you can individually be recognized. But I want to point out what we're going to get. As the Secretary mentioned, I'm the king of swag today. Um, so um, what we are going to present you all with today is a uh, certificate, which is your official designation certificate, which is signed by Governor Patrick, Lieutenant Governor Murray, the Secretary, and myself. In addition, you'll each receive four of those uh, Metal Green Community signs that we, and we yes, Lisa will uh, show you, Vanna will show you more. <laughs> we ask that you display them conspicuously throughout your town so that in addition to raising awareness within your communities, you can also raise awareness with the other communities that are not yet designated green communities. And finally, you will all be presented with a ceremonial check, uh, which reflects the grant amount that each one of your communities will receive in being designated as green communities. Since 2010, we've been able to award over $23 million to the 103 cities and towns across the Commonwealth. And they've invested those dollars in energy efficiency projects, in schools, firehouses, municipal buildings. They've invested it in solar programs for residents and solar PD projects. Uh, so it is an amazing list of projects that have been completed or are in process. And we look forward to working with all of you on your projects as we move forward. And so at this point, 
we're going to begin with um, our host community of Amherst. Um, the town of Amherst has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $302,000 for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. I, invore, I invite the Chair of the Board of Selectmen, <coughs> Chair O'Keefe, the Town Manager, John Rosante, uh, the Sustainability Coordinator, Stephanie uh, Ch Chicarello, <laughs> and any other Amherst representatives to join Secretary Sullivan uh, and, and me uh, to officially receive your check and say a few words. Sullivan, Commissioner Sylvia. Uh, I also want to do a shout out to people like Jim Barry, who helped us every step of the way uh, meet the very uh, rigorous but achievable uh, criteria uh, to become designated as a green community. Uh, Amherst uh, has embraced this value. We've been very blessed uh, in our community to have uh, the support of our uh, community's leadership and uh, Stephanie O'Keefe and, and entire select board have made uh, having Amherst become a greener community a priority. We've had tremendous support in town meeting, including a near unanimous vote last year on the stretch code. Uh, and we've had uh, great dedication on the part of uh, town staff, including our first ever uh, sustainability coordinator in Amherst, uh, Stephanie Ciccarello, uh, Sally Miller, uh, and, and an intern with us uh, working on, on Green Communities application throughout and, and cooperation of a number of our staff and department heads. We are hard at work uh, putting a detailed action plan together on the first use of this grant money and we are looking at a very ambitious uh, street light replacement program replacing uh, street lights, uh, majority of them with LED street lights save a lot of uh, energy, uh, save us on maintenance we're very, very excited about it, and we can't wait to get started. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Uh, we now recognize the town of Conway. The town of Conway has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $139,650 for efficiency and renewable energy projects. I'm pleased to invite uh, Board Selectman Chair John O'Rourke, Energy Committee Chair Rick Bean, Representative Kulik and anyone else who's here from Conway to please join the Secretary and I in your check. Designated as green communities. 
We look forward to putting the Green Communities Grant to good use in energy conservation and energy resource development projects. I want to thank Rick Bean, Chair of the Energy Committee for the Town of Conway and the newest member of our Board of Selectmen and the members of the Energy Committee. Rick. They all worked very hard on getting us the, the Green Community designation. Certainly, thanks go to the Patrick Murray administration for their very important Green Community initiative. Special thanks go to Jim Barry, who helped us and guided us through the application process and pushed us when we needed a push. Also special thanks to Stacy Metzger of the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Stacy. <laughs> Stacy helped us through the application project and, and again pushed us along. And of course, special thanks to the town of Amherst, Chair of the Select Board O'Keefe, and town manager Ms. Shanti for hosting this great event. And certainly congratulations to all the others of you who are here today at this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Selector yeah. O'Rourke. At this time, we will recognize the town of Gill. The town of Gill has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $156,825 for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. I invite Selectman John Ward, Energy Committee Chair Claire Chang, and other Gill representatives to join Secretary Sullivan and myself for the presentation of the check. <coughs> So I'm Claire Chang, I'm Chair of the Gill Energy Commission, and I want to particularly thank um, Governor Patrick for starting the Green Communities Act in 2008. It was really wonderful to be able to um, have something to focus on so that the town could actually move towards um, more energy efficiency and conservation. Um, we started with the EECBG grants, so we had already gotten a little jump ahead on some of our um, energy plan. Um, for the five-year 20% reduction. Um, but this extra amount from the um, grant application will certainly help push us over that 20% and maybe even to 30%, which would be a fabulous amount to work towards. Um, and I uh, want to thank everybody here. I don't know everybody's name because I didn't take notes as <laughs> no, well as okay. all the prior speakers did. But I want to particularly thank Stacy Metzger and Jim Barry because we would not have gone through this at all um, from step one on without those two people. Um, they were just such a big, big help and getting us, keeping us on track. And also Stacy, not Stacy, Peggy Sloan also helped us particularly with the um, overlay, solar overlay district. Um, criteria. And uh, I just want to say though that even with all this work that all the 103 communities are doing in the state of Massachusetts and all the grassroots and local efforts, it's still an awful big, big project we've got ahead of us here. Um, if anybody read Bill McKibben's article on Rolling Stones about the terrifying new math of global warming, we have got a very, very large project ahead of us and I hope we all push every day and think of, with every act that we do, how can we do with less? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Chang. And I understand there is there are no representatives here from Huntington. Okay. Then we will move on to the town of Northfield. The town of Northfield has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $143,750 for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. 
I invite Selectman Chair Kathleen Wright, Energy Committee Chair Bob Pesteris, and any other Northfield representatives to join Secretary Sullivan and me to accept your check. Big clap for now. through transition Northfield uh, starting a smaller footprint and uh, this is another step along the way and I agree uh, with everything that's been said we have to uh, move in this direction and I'm glad we have the opportunity I want we are a town of volunteers and Bob Pesteris and Annie Chappelle of our energy committee made it possible even though the selectmen endorsed it strongly they're the ones that did the work, and I'd also like to thank um, Mr. Barry. I have to say, one phase I was concerned about was the stretch code, but he came up to Northville, and we had a pretty good turnout, and he uh, made it seem that possible, and at our annual meeting, it was unanimously passed. So thank you, everybody. also has the distinction of being the gateway to the new greenway that Representative Q have talked about. So all the way from the Vermont border all the way down to Connecticut, we have the greenway in Northfield is at the top. So congratulations. We now would like to recognize the town of Pelham. The town of Pelham has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $138,100 for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. I invite Linda, Linda Michaud from the Board of Selectmen um, as well as uh, Daniel Robb and Stanley Swartz to please join Secretary Sullivan, myself, and Representative Kulik in receiving your check. And a round of applause. Thank you so much. It's nice to be here in your, in your room. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, I just wanted to mention that um, you know we have four buildings that are heated in Pelham Five municipal buildings, um, and the, the bulk of this money is going to go to our main building, which serves the police department, the fire department, the library, town meeting rooms. Um, it's also the library for the school children in town. Council on Aging. It's the Center for the Council on Aging. Basically, everything happens there in Pelham, and we've got an enormous problem with the, uh, the roof. It just lets most of the heat out of the building, which is a long story. But this money will have a tremendous effect on Pelham and our ability to save money in the town annually on our heating bills. Uh, it may seem like a, uh, not a, an incredible sum, but to the little town of Pelham with an annual budget of $4 million, plus or minus, it's an enormous sum and it will make a huge difference in our town and we, we really do thank you. Last, um, but really not least, we've got to thank Jim Barry. He was tireless. He came to so many meetings. We said, do, do you think you could come on short notice? Sure, he said, always. And he showed up and he was clear and he was concise and he was helpful and non-threatening and encouraging. <laughs> and so uh, you really have a great, a great uh, asset there in Jim. Um, did I miss anything? Oh, you do. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Is Jim up for a job? I, I was just, uh, you know, Mr. Secretary, I was just going to say it's interesting because he's in the middle of his performance evaluation. I just find it peculiar that. Uh, yeah, he didn't bring the cake. Though. Yeah, he didn't bring the cake. Yeah, you can't take credit for the cake. Um, our final community that we're recognizing today is the town of Sunderland. The Town of Sunderland has been awarded a Green Communities Grant of $146,450 for energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. I invite the Town Administrator, Margaret Narkowitz, Narkowitz? Narkowitz, to please join Secretary Sullivan, myself, and Representative Hewlett to receive your chair. We have a true partnership with the regional planning agencies throughout the inception of the Green Communities uh, Designation Program, and even now as we are celebrating our 103 Green Communities, uh, the COGS have been instrumental and Stacy has been a, a 
real leader and a great support. So can, thank you very much, Stacey. <laughs> Ken Garber, Ken, where are you? Ken Garber is, rep uh, is uh, representing Wamico. Wamico, as you know, is a utility that we've partnered with, not only in the energy efficiency programs that are deliver delivered across the Commonwealth, but as a support for the Green Communities Division and the Green Communities Designation Program. So thank you to uh, Wamico for being here. Um, I also. <laughs> I also uh, want to recognize our staff, um, and I will recognize Jim. Um, uh, but I want to recognize Lisa Capone. Lisa is the Deputy Director of Green Communities. <laughs> Meg Lusardi, who could not be here today, uh, but has been instrumental throughout this whole process. Uh, she's the Director of the Green Communities Division, so she would have liked to have been here, but she's uh, on a well-earned vacation with her family, but she sends her regards. I also want to recognize Meg Kolkla, who helps to organize these events. She's to the back there. Raise your hand. She doesn't like to be here. <laughs> and last but not least, Jim Barry. Um, I want to say that a critical part of the whole Green Communities Program and the Green Communities Division is the four regional coordinators that are out in the field, that are actually in the field every day, that are there for you when you need them. Uh, we have one in each of the four regions, and Jim happens to be our Western Regional uh, Coordinator. And it's important for us because each of the regional coordinators are from the region that they work in and have had some impact uh, in the regions that they work in. And Jim, who's worked in local government and has been our regional coordinator now for two and a half years, three years, uh, time flies when you're having fun, um, has just been a, a great asset for us, and we're very uh, glad to have him. And it's nice to hear your accolades because it means we made the right decision and hired him in the first place. <laughs> so congratulations to Jim Barry. Thank you. <laughs> so the last thing that I want to say is what I think is the most important message that I want to convey to all of you today. Um, and I think we mentioned it when we were up in Boston celebrating 103, but it's worth noting again. This is not the end of a relationship. You're designated green communities, and you should be very proud of that. But that doesn't mean our support for you and what you do, whether it's financial through future grants, competitive grants, or through technical assistance, or our office's support, doesn't end today, it begins today. This is a long-term commitment that you have all made, and it's a long-term commitment that the Patrick Murray administration has made. And so, as we leave today, just remember that we continue to be there to support all of you as you move forward in creating a cleaner energy future for your community. And as the Secretary likes to say, as patriots in this clean energy revolution that we have here in Massachusetts. So uh, on behalf of the Secretary and Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Murray, congratulations and thank you very much.